Konami Hyper Boy, Konami Hyper Boy, Konami Hyper Boy. I think I love retro games. I think I love retro games. I think I love retro games. Oh, hello. It's me. It's Jason Retro Games, and I am here today to talk about something strange, and that is the Konami Hyperboy. Konami um, Hyperboy. Konami, famous for, of course, track and field. But they also are famous for Castlevania and hundreds of thousands of other things. But they also made some hardware. Um, and that is what we're looking at today. The Hyper Boy. Konami Hyper Boy. It looks like the most glamorous tabletop you've ever seen. I mean, it looks like a beast, doesn't it? I mean, it's all got smooth edges, looks a bit space age. Let's have a look. Let's open the box and give you a show. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, we've got Polly in a box. Polly in a box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Uh, with a lid. Oh, we've got the manual. Lovely manual. I'll put that there. Um, and let's pull this out. This is the Hyper Boy. Ganami Hyper Boy. Which is a brilliant name, isn't it? It's a brilliant name for something. The Hyper Boy. Konami the reason for that boy. is because it's for the Game Boy. It's related to the Game Boy. I just happen to have a Game Boy here so we can get it working. Um, let me just check the battery situation. Oh, we've got a battery cover on the back. Uh, 2D batteries. It might just be a few minutes. Launched in 1969 as a jukebox repair company, it wasn't until 1981 that Konami took the gaming world by storm with their legendary Scramble and Frogger coin-op games. Now not only famous for Metal Gear and Castlevania, Konami created the phenomenal Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise and helped arcade players get into shape with Dance Dance Revolution. I am back, I am back with a Game Boy and 2D batteries. Um, let's, uh, let's put the D batteries in first. Not many things take D batteries, do they? Ridiculously huge batteries. I don't know if they make anything new that has D batteries. Back in the old days, you used to have your big radio cassette player on your shoulder and that took about 10 of them. Um, and they were the the kings of the battery usage. Please get me off this subject. Okay, don't leave this time. So now we have our we have our we have our hyper boy Konami hyper, hyper boy console um, with batteries installed. And here we have a Game Boy, Nintendo Game Boy original one, nice in the box, showing off, just showing off, a nice one. But I'm not showing off that much because I know this Game Boy doesn't have the lid. It doesn't have the lid on the box, which is a shame, but you know, it's got all the other bits and pieces, including the headphones um, and the manuals. No, it hasn't got headphones. Oh yeah, it's a good thing. Oh, shut up about your bloody headphones. Right, so we have a Game Boy. We'll, we'll put a we'll put Tetris in it. Um, everyone doesn't know this is a Game Boy. It was released in 1988, and it was. Nintendo's answer to nothing, because it was <laughs> the first successful cartridge based handheld, really. We will cover the Microvision, which was the king back in the late 1970s of LCD gaming. But you can't, <laughs> it really does pale into absolute insignificance compared to the Game Boy. And it's the success of the Game Boy which led to non hardware companies like Konami releasing odd things. Like the Hyper Boy. Konami uh, Hyper the game Boy. Was working. It's, it, it is. It is working. I'm very. Not very happy about being working. He's been stuck in his box for about fifteen years. Okay. Game Boy works now. This is what. This is the action. Let's get the action. This slots in to. 
to the Hyperboy. We have a, con a control on here. Oh, there's a power switch somewhere. Is there a power switch? Or is this dead as a donut? Let me turn it on and see what happens. Ah, it's meant to light up. Where is the lights? Oh, hang on. I found it. It's on the side. Ah, listen to that. Super loud. Oh, I think we've crackled to a halt. Oh, I think it's just... It's, just re it's loud, isn't it? Look at the illuminated screen there. Wow! We turned our very cool handheld game into a huge, heavy, massive tabletop game. Uh, and now we can play tabletop. These little, these look like the red buttons and the joystick, they are basically touch similar buttons which poke at the actual Game Boy inside. So you're remotely controlling it with uh, little levers. And you remember this comes from a time when there was there was no Super Game Boy. You couldn't play a you couldn't play a Game Boy on the big screen, and you didn't have any light, so you couldn't play it in the dark. But this beast, oh, I'm playing Tetris. Uh, uh, uh. Time for some close-ups. Right, let's switch it on. Oh, look at that! Can you tell this lit up? Possibly not. Um, let me turn the lights off. Oh, that's better. I think I'm proving here that I can't play Tetris. Everyone can play Tetris. Not me. We're not on a tabletop game pretending to be a handheld. Oh, come on, just die. Just die. Oh, yeah. I died. Wow, that's loud. And there, everybody, is the Konami Hyper Boy. Konami on Hell of a Beast. A it's really hard to find. Um, I think it's one of those novel, crazy retro gaming devices which is the reason we all collect this stuff. Until next time retro gamers!